In this video, we're going to take a look at how to graph linear equations. A lot of this should be a review from your previous algebra classes, so we're going to go through it pretty quickly. But we're going to look at sections 1.2 through 1.4, where we're going to graph linear equations. So with graph and linear equation, the first thing we really need to be good at is understanding this concept of slope. Slope is simply the rate of change. Really, it's a measure of the steepness of a line. And there's lots of formulas that you might have seen for slope. You might have seen the formula rise over run. You might have seen the change in y over the change in x. You might have seen y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Any of these formulas are really talking about the same thing. They're talking about the rate of change, or the slope, between two points. So for example, if I've got these two points, negative 2 comma 3 and 4 comma negative 1, and we wanted to find the slope between those points, we can go about it a couple different ways. One way we can go about it is to actually graph them. So I'm going to attempt to graph these two points. I have the program give me a nice coordinate plane here, nice and pretty. And if we graph these points, we've got negative 2, comma 3, and 4, negative 1. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 each direction. And the point negative 2, comma 3 is backwards 2, up 3. And the point 4, negative 1 is right 4, down 1. And if I did a good job, let's see if I can connect those with a straight line. There we go. And so we can find our slope off of this by looking at the rise over the run, how far the graph rises, and how far the graph runs from one point to the next. So you might notice it goes down 1, 2, 3, 4. We went down 4. And then we ran 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points. So the slope, we always use the letter m to represent slope. The slope is down 4, rise negative 4, run 6, which reduces to a negative 2 thirds. And if you notice, if we follow that pattern, negative 2 thirds, if we go down 2, 1, 2, and run 3, 1, 2, 3, we hit another point on the line. And even from there, down 2, run 1, 2, 3, we hit a point on the line. And that's going to happen all the way up and down the line. That's graphically, though the problem with finding a slope graphically is a lot of the times it takes a lot of work to make the graph. Sometimes the points aren't pretty. And sometimes the graph would have to be so large or so small, it's hard to get accurate points. So more often, we're going to instead use this slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's take a look at how that would work out with this example here. We could have found the slope. We've got x, y points. We'll call this first one point 1 and the second one point 2. So y2, the second y is negative 1 minus y1, which is 3 over x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is negative 2. And then we can actually evaluate this. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 
When we add the opposite, we get 4 plus 2 is 6, which reduces to a negative 2 thirds. And we get the same answer for the slope. This equation method is probably going to be used much more often than graphing it. I do want to look at one more example, though, before we step away from slope. And that is to find the slope between the points 3, 5 and 3, negative 1. Now, with this one, this is going to be a little different. Because if we take a look at our slope formula, y2 minus y1, remember it's x, y, x, y. We've got a first point and a second point. y2 would be negative 1 minus y1 is 5 over x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is 3. And when we subtract there, we get negative 6 over 0. And there's a problem. We can't divide by 0. This is undefined. There is no slope between these two points, because really it's too steep of a slope to even graph. Here's what I mean by that. If we were to try and draw a picture of this, and we're going to go out to 5 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The first point is at 3, comma 5. The second point at 3, comma negative 1. You'll notice that that is a straight line up and down. We're going to pretend that's right through 3. You'll notice that's a straight line up and down. If we think of slope as a measure of steepness, and we were to try and climb this, our little man trying to climb it would actually fall down. He can't climb it. It's too steep. It's undefined. It's too steep to measure. A vertical line has no slope. We can use slope in a lot of different ways. One way we can use slope is if we know some information about the graph, we can actually graph the line. So for example, we can graph a line that goes through the points negative 2, comma 1 with a slope of negative 2 thirds. So here's our guy to graph. Let's give it some points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 each direction. And we're given this first point on here is at negative 2, comma 1. That's left 2, up 1. There is the first point. The way we get our second point then from there, we can use our slope, which tells us how to rise and run from that first point. We're going to rise negative 2, which means we're going to go down 2. And we're going to run 3, 1, 2, 3 spots to get to our next point. We can continue that pattern, rise negative 2, run 3. We can even go backwards, rise positive 2, run negative 3. And we get these lines. And hopefully, they're all going to be on a straight line all together. Look at that. There is the line through negative 2, comma 1 with a slope of negative 2 thirds. This idea of slope helps us when we start working with the equations of a line. So we're going to go to b here as a subpoint. We're done with A. A is all about slope. B, we're going to be taking a look at what's called the slope intercept equation. And the slope intercept, by way of review, is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line. And b if my pen will write, b is the y-intercept. Then it 
gets its point from 0, comma, b. If we know the slope and the y-intercept, we can use that process that we just saw, start with a point and use the slope to get the next point. So for example, we can graph y equals 2x minus 3. Let's give it some points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. If we think about the equation y equals mx plus b, we see that m, the slope here, is 2. As a fraction, that would be 2 over 1. We're going to rise 2 and run 1. B, the y-intercept, gives us a starting point at negative 3. The y-axis, you'll remember, is the vertical axis. And so at negative 3 on the vertical axis, we get our first point. From there, we'll use our slope to rise 2 and run 1 to get our next point. We can keep rise 2, run 1, and keep going like that to get to all of our points. Connecting the dots, we'll get our line. Let's try a couple more examples. Let's try to graph negative 2x plus y equals 1. What you might notice is different about this equation is it's not in that y equals mx plus b form because the y is not alone. It's got a negative 2x hanging out with it. So we need to get rid of that negative 2x simply by adding 2x to both sides. And so we get y equals 2x plus 1. They're not like terms. And then we can see how that relates with y equals mx plus b. We can see just by observation that m, our slope, is going to be 2 over 1. Same slope, rise 2, run 1 that we just saw. This time, though, b, our y-intercept, our starting point, is at 1. So let's see if we can graph that without it running off the page here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. B, the y-intercept, the y-axis is the vertical axis, is at 1. The slope then is going to rise 2 from that point and run 1 to get our next point. We can do it again, rise 2, run 1. We could go backwards, rise negative 2, run negative 1. Whoops. Make sure we do it right. Count the x-axis as a point. Rise negative 2, run negative 1. There we go. And now we should all line up nice and pretty on a straight line. There's our graph. Let's try one of a similar vein that might be a little more involved. Let's try to graph 3x minus 2y equals 6. Again, you notice the y that we need is not alone. So we get it alone. First, we get the x's out of the way by subtracting the 3x. When we do that, we get negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. Finally, we get the y alone by dividing by the negative 2. And now when we divide by negative 2, we have to make sure we divide everything by negative 2. Division has to distribute, just like multiplication distributes. 
through everything. So we end up with y equals positive 3 halves x minus 6 over 2 is 3. And so now if you think about it as y equals mx plus b, we can again see that m, the slope this time, is 3 halves. So we're going to rise 3, run 2. And b, the y-intercept, is at negative 3. And that's on the vertical line again. So let's see if I can keep the problem on the page. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, and five. Our first point, B, is at negative 3. Again, that's on the vertical y-axis of negative 3. And then from there, we're going to rise 3, run 2. Rise 1, 2, 3, run 2 sticks us right on the x-axis. You can rise three more and run two more for good measure and connect those all with a straight line. Whoops. Let me try that again. We're going to try and connect those all with a straight line. Much better that time. Before we move away from this idea of straight lines uh, on the graph, I want to take a quick look at horizontal and vertical lines, because sometimes those do some weird things. So we're going to graph y equals 3. First off, if we're thinking about y equals mx plus b, you see y is there, but m, the number multiplied by x, is not there. There is no x, so there is no mx. In this case, m, our slope, is 0. But what's going to be really important to us is b, the y-intercept, is 3. So when we try and graph this, what you'll notice happens is y has to be equal to 3. That's our y-intercept is at 3. In fact, it's going to be 3 always. And you notice if I take a horizontal line each direction, x changes. x might be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, maybe even negative 1, 2, 3 or 4. But all along that horizontal line, y is always equal to 3. So let me just erase this real quick. So when I have y equals to 3, that is a flat line going through y equals 3. Similarly, when I have a flat line, example number 5 here, x equals negative 1. This is going to be a flat line going through x equals negative 1. You'll notice there's no y equals because here the slope is undefined. There's no y equals because there is no slope. So we're going to go through x at negative 1. That's a vertical line, if I could place it right, through the x-axis at negative 1. So those are some special lines. If they happen to come up, then you can know how to handle those. But in general, slope-intercept form, if I can scroll correctly, slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b is going to be an important formula for you to know. We use that slope-intercept form when we're trying to find 
the equation of a line. And basically, we're going to use y equals mx plus b, but we're going to have to find m and b to do that. Usually, we find them in that order, too. So for example, we might be told that the slope of a line is 2 fifths, and the y-intercept is negative 1. Well, slope, we know that's the m in the formula. So m equals 2 fifths. And here they're nice enough to tell us the y-intercept, that's the b of our formula, equal to negative 1. So if we think about y equals mx plus b, that's y equals m, my slope is 2 fifths, x plus b, our y-intercept, of negative 1. This is the equation of the line with a slope of 2 fifths and a y-intercept of negative 1. Now, most of the time, they're not going to be so nice. When we're trying to solve some application problem, which we're going to get into tomorrow once we get good at this stuff, most of the time, you just have information about the line, but not all the pieces you need. For instance, we might know the line goes through the point 3 comma negative 1, and we know the slope is negative 2 thirds. Now, granted, we know the slope. That's nice. We know the slope is negative 2 thirds. What we don't know is b, the y-intercept. And so we're going to have to find that. And we can find the y-intercept from the equation y equals mx plus b, because this point gives us an x and a y value. So we can plug all these values into the equation. y is equal to negative 1 equals m, the slope is negative 2 thirds, times x, which is 3, plus b. Now, this is nice here because the 3's can divide out. And so what we really have is negative 1 equals negative 2 plus b. And we can quickly solve this equation by adding 2 to both sides. b is equal to 1. So now we're ready to make our full equation. y equals m, my slope, which is negative 2 thirds, times x plus b, which in this case we found is 1. So our equation of our line is y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1. This problem, we were still able to find the equation of the line, even though we weren't told the y-intercept. Sometimes we're told neither the y-intercept nor the slope. Sometimes we just know we have points. For example, if I have the points 2 comma negative 3 and 1 comma 4, we can still find the equation of the line that goes through these two points. And many of our business applications that we're going to get into starting tomorrow are going to use this method to come up with the equation of the line. First thing we always need to find for any equation is always the slope, m. And we did this at the beginning of the lecture. We know we've got x's and y's. We've got a first point and a second point. So y2 is 4 minus y1 is negative 3 over x1 is 1 minus x2 is 2. I think I said that backwards. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals 4 plus 3 is 7. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So we have a slope of negative 7. Now that we have the slope, we can go through that same process using either one of our points and this slope. 
I like the second point just for fun. It actually doesn't matter which point we use in order to find the y-intercept. Just have to pick one and stick with it. So I'm just going to pick the second. So it's y equals mx plus b. The y that we picked was 4 equals m that we found was negative 7. x is 1 plus b. Simplifying then, when we multiply negative 7 times 1, we get 4 equals negative 7 plus b. And finally, we add 7 to both sides to isolate our b. 11 is equal to b. We've got our b. We've got our y-intercept. We've got our slope. y equals m. The slope is negative 7. It's the wrong color. The slope is negative 7 times x plus the y-intercept, which we found to be 11. y equals negative 7x plus 11. Let's do one more kind of an interesting version of this problem. We're going to find the equation of the line that has an x-intercept of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3, which is an interesting difference. Now, what's an x-intercept? If I think about this, I'm just going to draw a really crude diagram here. This is not to scale. Um, so we've got this guy. And it's going to go through maybe this way. What this is saying is the x-intercept is 2. It's going to cross the x-axis at 2. So that's a point of 2 comma 0. The x-intercept has 0 in the other variable. Intercept has 0 in the other variable, which means the y-intercept here has 0 in the other variable. 0 in the x variable, the y value, is negative 3. So what we're given is two points on the line, 2, 0, and 0, negative 3. We can use that to find our slope from our xy's from the first point and the second point. y2 is negative 3 minus y1 is 0 over x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is 2. That gives us negative 3 over negative 2. And a negative over a negative is a positive. This has a slope of positive 3 halves. Now we just need the y-intercept. We have the y-intercept given to us, which is nice. The y-intercept is negative 3. So we can hop right to our equation. y equals m, our slope, which we found to be 3 halves, times x plus b which we got negative 3. I did the wrong color for my slope, so much for my consistent coloring. 3 halves, there we go, blue slope. Something you'll find about my videos is I really like color. I try and be consistent. I'm not quite perfect, but we're getting there. That's the real important part of this lecture that I really want you to get. You should be able to find a slope, you should be able to graph a line, and you should be able to find the equation of a line. There are a few more little things that I want to talk about, but this is really the big idea that I wanted to cover. The two few little things, the first one is this thing called standard form. Standard form is the equation ax plus by equals c. And just as a note, that b is not necessarily the y-intercept. That a is not necessarily the x-intercept. Those are just letters so that we have this ABC thing going on. And it's also important in standard form that a, the first variable, is greater than or equal to 0. Positive. 
we want to have a positive first coefficient. So this is going to look much like what we did before. Basically, we can find the equation of a line in slope-intercept form. And then we'll algebraically play with it to get rid of the fractions and make it a nice, pretty ax plus by equals c. I won't make you do this on a test, but it does show up on the homework assignment, so it's worth going over here. Um, first example, let's go through the point 2 comma 3, and let's have a slope of negative 3 fifths. So again, we're going to go to y equals mx plus b, try and find that y-intercept. To do that, we've got an x and a y. So y equals mx plus b. y is equal to 3. m, the slope, we were told is negative 3 fifths times x, which is 2 plus b. This is a good problem. It's going to make us do some fractions. That's OK. Um, can't do any reducing, so we're just going to multiply 3 equals negative 6 fifths. Remember, we multiply straight across, plus b. Then to get our b, we're going to add the 6 fifths to both sides. And it might be easier to think about the 3. It's 3 over 1 right now. Common denominator is 5. So if we multiply by 5, we get 15 fifths plus 6 fifths is 21 fifths equals our b. Hopefully, you know how to get a common denominator on fractions and add them. We're not going to review that here. And so we get our equation y, which should be, whoops, hello if my computer will work. We get our equation, which is y equals m, our slope, which was negative 3 fifths x, plus b, which we found to be 21 fifths. Now, to get it into standard form, we're going to start to play with it a bit, massage it a bit to get it like we want it to be. Standard form first has no fractions. We can get rid of our fractions by multiplying each term by the common denominator, which in this case is 5. And that's nice because the 5's divide out. The 5's divide out, so we get 5y equals negative 3x plus 21. Fractions are gone. The other part we want is we want the x's, all on, the x's and y's on one side, the number on the other side. We also want the x to be positive. X is negative right now, so we're going to move it by adding 3x to both sides. That gives us 3x plus 5y equals 21. And now this is the equation in standard form. 3x plus 5y equals 21. Again, it's not on the test, but it is on the homework, so it's worth taking a look at. Something else that I want to expose you to, it's going to come up in a future unit for us. Um, but there's this thing called parametric form. Of an equation. And basically what parametric form is going to do is it's going to give us a formula to find x and a formula to find y using some dummy variable, which is usually the variable t, sometimes r and s because they're close to t. But parametric form are equations for each variable using a dummy variable. How do you spell dummy? Boy, I'm a dummy. I don't know how to spell dummy. Is there an E? Somebody in class can tell me the correct spelling of dummy when you get to class. <laughs> Sorry about that. Using some dummy variable, t. 
So for example, what this would look like is you would see an equation written x equals 3 plus 2t and y equals 1 plus t. So we've got a formula for x and a formula for y. We're going to try and graph this equation. And we don't really have that slope-intercept feel from this. So what we're going to do, if I shift a bit here, is we're going to pick different values for t. And then, based on those values for t, we're going to calculate an x and calculate a y. So let's make a table here. We're going to pick a value for t, and it's going to give us an x and a y. We can pick any values for t we want. We can pick 0, 1, and negative 1. Those are my favorites. So in blue, I'm going to do 0. In green, I'm going to do 1. And in orange, I'm going to do negative 1. And that's going to give us a value for x and y that goes with those. And we're going to plug them in to the t's. So first, plugging 0 in. Uh, just doing some scratch over to the right here. We get x is equal to 3 plus 2t, which we said was 0. You can see pretty quick that's going to be 3. And y equals 1 plus t. 1 plus 0 is going to be 1. So we've got this point 3, comma 1 on the graph. In green, we go back and do it again, but this time we're going to plug 1 in for t. So x is 3 plus 2 times 1, or 3 plus 2, which is 5. So x is 5. And y is 1 plus t. t we said was 1. 1 plus 1 is clearly 2. So this gives us a second point on our graph of 5, comma. 2. Finally, the negative 1, when it gets plugged in, x equals 3 plus 2 times negative 1. That's 3 minus 2, which is a positive 1. And y equals 1 plus negative 1, which is 0. So x is 1, y is 0. And that gives us a third point. So now we should be able to graph these points on the line. Let's see if I can keep the problem on the screen at the same time. All right, so the first point in blue was 3 comma 1. The second point in green, 5 comma 2. And the third point in orange, 1 comma 0. And you'll notice that those are all on a nice, perfectly straight line. That's the idea behind parametric form of an equation. We've got some dummy variable t that we can just plug in to generate the points on the line. Again, this is going to come up in more detail in a later unit for us when we're talking about matrices. But right now, uh, the, while this shows up on the homework assignment, the important thing I want you to be able to do is find the slope, find the equation, and graph the equation of a line. We'll see you in class. Let me know what questions you've got.